now that I have my composition pretty much set, I can do a few more things to play with it. I can scale everything up, for example, and let the objects be cropped off the edge of the paper. Uh, and um, I can also change the size of the stroke. I think I'm going to set it to one point. Uh, actually, I think that's a little bit much. I might go down to 0.75. Uh, it's up to you. You may want a thicker line in your pieces. You may want no lines at all, and that's also an option. We'll get there in a second. And notice in some of these areas, the complexity of the shapes uh, overlapping one another. Uh, particularly in here um, and even in here I'm not crazy about the way that's meeting up so I think I'm going to just move this over slightly to see where it's going to cut into that piece um, yeah and we're pretty much ready to go for the next part which is using the Pathfinder and I have a rather unusual way of using it and that's what I'm going to teach you in this tutorial is how to take your uh, line drawings and use them to cut into um, an existing shape and what results is a series of little shapes made by these lines. So rather than talk about it, I'm going to show you. I have all my lines here in my composition. This is layer one. I'm going to call this strokes and I'm going to select everything so I can copy it. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to lock my strokes layer. That's very important. Lock this layer. And you're going to create a new layer. Layer two. Let's put that below the strokes layer. And on layer two, I have layer two selected. You can see it's highlighted in blue. Also, my strokes layer is locked, so there's no chance of pasting in that locked layer. I'm going to hit Command B for paste behind. And what that's going to do, it's going to place all of my line drawings in exactly the same place as they were in the above layer. This time, however, I'm not going to keep them as strokes. I'm going to make them into shapes. I'm going to go to Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. That's Object, Path, Outline, Stroke. That makes them all into shapes. Okay, they are no longer editable strokes, they are now paths. I'm going to open up my Pathfinder window, Pathfinder, and I'm going to click Unite. I'm going to make all of these lines one shape. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle that's the size of my artboard. And I'm going to give it a fill of a, a very neutral color, just a light gray. Zoom in. Let's make sure we're the right size. Okay. That looks good. All right. All right. Now, um, I'm going to take my rectangle and uh, Actually, we'll leave it right where it is. I was going to say let's paste it behind, but we don't need to. What we want to do is we want to grab everything on that layer. I'm using my black arrow, my, my selection tool, not my direct selection tool, my selection tool to select everything. Now I'm going to hit divide and go to object, ungroup. So what this did by creating this rectangle and having all these lines by having them intersect using the divide, the, the divide mode on the Pathfinder, I now have individual shapes where it was once a solid shape. That's a great technique to use when um, you need to create maybe a complicated background or something that looks fragmented, kind of like what we have here. I'm gonna go ahead and select the parts we don't need and delete them. I'm using my selection tool to select those outside edges and hit delete. You could save them for something else. You could even reintroduce them. In fact, maybe we'll do that. I'm going to just pull these aside and maybe reintroduce them into my composition, depending on how we're feeling. 
Okay, so now we can start applying color. And one great resource for color is Adobe, actually. Color.adobe.com. And you can explore different themes or different color rules um, throughout this site. So if you go to page two or page three, you could see some interesting uh, um, color combinations, um, some very harmonious, uh, monochromatic, um, personally, I love analogous color schemes. Uh, I just think that they are very pleasing, low contrast, but rich in hue. And find something that intrigues you. You can also go up to create and you can create your own color palette. So, you know, hypothetically, I could use this color palette. Um, now, I use this as a starting point, but oftentimes I end up editing my colors once I'm in Illustrator anyway. Uh, so because of that, I'm not going to download this palette and then um, import it into my Illustrator document. I'm just simply going to screenshot it and open it up into Illustrator. So I'm going to file open, I'm going to go to my desktop, find my screenshots. Open that, copy, and then paste it into my document here. Now, if I wanted to, I could create um, two, three, four. Okay. I could create um, little swatches here and uh, apply these colors simply by using the eyedropper. And if you do that, then it's really easy to create a swatch library. So I'm gonna grab those, open up my swatches, click on this little new color group. That's what I meant to say, color group. And all those colors are now, in fact, swatches, which makes it easier to apply the color to these shapes. Now I just need to come in here and grab the shapes and apply the color. If you hold down shift, you can um, select more than one shape at a time. And this is how you're going to build your composition. I mentioned earlier that I prefer sometimes to use analogous color schemes. Um, I would argue that this is um, complement analogous because we've got orange and blue and then we've got the colors adjacent to blue on the color wheel over here and one color adjacent to orange on the color wheel. So this is in line with a, a complement analogous color scheme. I want you to be exploring different color schemes. Um, refer to that color theory tutorial video that I gave you a link to and I also have a basic color theory handout and that's going to help you uh, help guide you in making some of those decisions based around color. But that's all this is. It's just an exploration of shape and form and color and composition. So here's the first version of my composition using the uh, the color palette that I had showed you earlier and I also use some of my discarded pieces to duplicate rotate scale and create another little element a very textural element that I'm placing in certain strategic areas um, so I encourage you to to really you know interact with um, these vector objects and explore what they can do, use color in a meaningful way, um, and, uh, and just have fun with it and see what emerges.